This can't be overstated. Starting a car company is hard. And this Fisker went from concept car to on the street in a little over three years. That is very impressive. So far, Fisker's had more than their fair share of problems. So we really can't say what the future holds for the company, but we can discuss this car. What's also fascinating is how many people have not seen this car yet. It's been out for a little while. If you've heard of the Tesla Model S, that is Tesla's second car. This is Fisker's first car, the Karma. I gotta admit, it's kind of fun to be in a car that turns heads as much as the Fisker does. In fact, in the history of this show, we have never had more people ask us about a car than during the shoot for the Fisker Karma. We can't stop this car without talking to people. Now, one of the most similar cars to the Fisker Karma is not the Tesla. The one that is most similar is the Chevy Volt. It is an electric powered car, two wheels are driven. In this case, it's rear wheel drive. In the case of the Volt, it's front wheel drives. And when the battery drains, there's a gasoline motor on board that kicks on to create electricity. The Karma is just a series hybrid. So what that means is the engine is not connected to the drive wheels, but only there to charge the batteries. Unfortunately, the engine in this car is just loud. The exhaust pipes are right behind the front wheels, which seems like a nice design theme, but it just, it just sounds terrible, frankly. And the cues are odd, because you hear the engine, when you really put it into sport mode and put your foot into it, you hear the engine really straining, but the way the car is delivering power doesn't match that noise. Despite that, the power delivery is actually fantastic. What the Karma also has going for it is the instantaneous torque of the electric motors to overcome the weight. And it's kind of like riding one of those moving sidewalks at the airport, but very fast in an amazingly comfy chair. At no time do I feel like this car is slouchy. This is a plug-in hybrid vehicle that I just want to drive like it's a normal car. And what's great about it is, you can. So the story goes that this car was inspired by Leonardo DiCaprio. Apparently, Henrik Fisker saw him get out of a Prius at the Oscars and thought, why is it that if you want to be green, you can't have a car that looks halfway decent? That was the original impetus for the Fisker automobile. Now, years later, as Fisker's gone through various investors and a bit of financial trouble, one of the actual investors in Fisker is Leonardo DiCaprio. So it all comes back around. Finally, an alternative fuel vehicle actually looks good. This car is pretty cool in pictures and it's stunning in person. This has an amazing amount of presence. I mean, there's flowing sexy lines all over this car. And then a mustache on the front. There are two design themes going on here. A stretched Aston Martin grille shape and a unique diamond pattern on the lower fascia. But on this car, it somehow works. Every Karma comes with a solar panel roof which trickle charges the car's 12 volt system as well as running ventilation on hot days. Some of the panel gaps in this car are huge and that really does shock me in a car that has been so meticulously designed. Some of these panel gaps are this big. Door handles are your first interaction with a car. On the Karma, using them should be a magnificent event, but they just appear to be ugly holes punched in the door. Inside, Fisker has done a good job utilizing low environmental impact textiles. Quilted padded ultra suede covers most of the interior, and the Karma proves you can create a luxury car with very few textured plastics. They've even overthought a few things, like to open the glove box, you press the glove button. Is it cool? Yes. Is it absurd? Probably. The steering wheel is unique to this car and carries over the design themes introduced on the exterior. Drive modes are selected with a unique looking push button cluster. Nearby, there's a mysterious glass panel showcasing a storage area you cannot open. It's just like this diorama to unused space. And in a car that is so cramped for space, this is vital real estate. 
Unfortunately, for a car as big as this is, it seems like the beautiful styling was definitely superior to usability. The Karma is pretty much a large four-door two-seater. The Karma also comes with something called pedestrian awareness, and it's a sound emitted by speakers in the front and the rear of the car. It kind of sounds like a robot groaning, but definitely gets your attention, so it's doing its job. All of the digital sounds this car makes were composed by a Hollywood composer, and it's the exact same composer we use for this show. Now, as soon as I heard the Fisker was 5,300 pounds, I thought this thing is going to handle like an armored truck, a very sleek, beautiful armored truck. You can buy SUVs that weigh less than the Fisker Karma but it does feel an awful lot smaller than it actually is. It doesn't feel anything close to an SUV. Fisker has really refined the dynamics of this car to match the low center of gravity and the weight. It's kind of blowing my mind. It just doesn't seem like it's possible to do that in a car that has a wheelbase almost as long as a limousine. When you get it up here on a canyon road, you start to really push it, it feels pretty good. I mean, the dynamics on this car are far better than either one of us were expecting. Now, this is not a sports car. You're not gonna buy this for its dynamic driving. It is surprising, but that's never going to be the reason you're going to buy or drive this car. The Fisker's driving characteristics are not like a BMW or a Porsche sharpness where you get a sense of the tactility of the road coming through the steering wheel. What you do get though is because of the weight, because of the wheels and tires, the size they are, and the center of gravity, the car is very accurate. It's very direct. Therefore, it feels like it's got sharp dynamic handling. But the big elephant in the room is actually the Porsche Panamera, and Fisker has kind of called out the Panamera, and the truth is, this is not as good as that. So with the Fisker, I would say you get 70, maybe 80% of the handling prowess of the Porsche Panamera, but none of the ugly. What I come away with from the Fisker is that I'm so excited by how well this car drives, I'm willing to overlook a lot of the things that you can say, well, I wish it had this, or I wish it did various things better. You have to look at it from a creative and pushing the boundaries forward kind of thing. It seems like an event. Every time I get in and drive it, it feels like a special occasion. This is no kind of family vehicle. It's probably only gonna work for the CEO who wants to brag and show off and is an early adopter to begin with. But we already liked the powertrain idea in the Volt. And here it is in a much sexier car that's a far more dynamic car to drive. Unfortunately, this engine in this capacity is just loud in an unattractive way. What Fisker has created is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle that doesn't compromise in terms of styling and how it drives. And for me, that's what I'm looking for. If I were in this market, that's what I would be looking for. Ultimately, I just, I'm surprised by this car. It looks better in person than I thought it would. It feels better to drive than I thought it would. It's expensive, but if you're in this class of automobile, why not? <laughs>